in which I listen to 43 albums and reply in 129 words or fewer. This is The Righteous Bo Jambo, and it's time to talk about Neil Young. It's an inevitable and unvarying aspect of the relationship between artist and audience that individuals within that audience each seek some kind of personal communion and relationship with the artist based on their perception of how the artist's offerings reflect, impact or affirm their thinking, experience and personal values. The word challenge used to be included in that set of actions, but increasingly in the internet era and the age of infantilization of audiences, no one actually can be challenged. They must be affirmed. To not do so is to bully or to marginalize or, heaven forfend, not be inclusive. But we all do it. We all project to some extent on either the artist personally or we co-opt their work to reinforce what we see as valuable in the world, be it a political statement or simply the value of craftsmanship and inspiration in making music in a world where these things are becoming increasingly irrelevant. And as we all do it, I do it. And that brings us circumlocutiously to the subject at hand. My relationship with Neil Young would best be described as storied. That is, it was always good when he played ear-splitting electric guitar, generally less so when he, perfectly understandably, decided to earn some real money playing acoustic guitar for the Long Socks and Birkenstocks crowd, and nowadays pretty much non-existent due to what I perceive as his incessant whininess. Soundtracking this relationship has been a bewildering array of recordings. Some good, some interesting, some dreadful. Excluding live albums, compilations, collaborations, etc., I count 42 albums since 1968's Neil Young that at the very least honestly charts his journeys to triumph and his spirals to disasters. I do choose to include works such as Time Fades Away, Rust Never Sleeps, and ARC as studio works, even though they were recorded live because they are independent offerings of new contemporary songs. Now, 42 album reviews is far too much to attempt and encapsulate. Besides, it would bring out far too often my uh, choleric humour, and nobody wants to witness that. So I hit on a novel approach. Here we have ranked from worst to best and reviewed in summaries of three words or less, the 42 essential Neil Young Go albums. Number 42, Americana. Screw you, Neil. Number 41, Everybody's Rockin'. Sue me, Geffen. Number 40, Ark, My Ears Suicided. Number 39, Living With War, Stupid Hippie Bull. Number 38, Peace Trail, Soul Numbing Dreck. Number 37, Broken Arrow, Waste of Money. Number 36, The Monsanto Years, A Horseless Miscarriage. Number 35, Are You Passionate, Somnambulistic. Number 34, Le Noir's, More Le Beau. Number 33, Hawks and Doves, Barrel Bottom Scraped. Number 32, Mirrorball, Pearl Jam, really? Number 31, Greendale, Needs More Horse. Number 30, Chrome Dreams 2, Piece of Crap. Number 29, The Visitor. Best, worst album? Number 28, Storytone. 
Divorce album. Yay. Number 27. This note's for you. Bland, inoffensive, 80s. Number 26. Old Ways. Points for Willie. Number 25. Landing on Water. Has its moments. Number 24. Fork in the Road. 24th? Seems worse. 23. American Stars and Bars. Only for Hurricane. 22. Life. Horse is good. 21. Ragged Glory. Massively overrated headache. 20. Freedom. Good outweighs bad. Number 19. Prairie Wind for Sunday Afternoons. Number 18. Silver and Gold. Somewhat underrated work. Number 17. Colorado. Mellow Horse. Interesting. Number 16. A Letter Home. Hi, Mom. Weird, disjointed, Neil-esque. Number 15. Harvest Moon. Canadian Comfort Food. Number 14. Trans. Unfairly maligned. Number 13. Tonight's the Night. I don't understand. Number 12. Neil Young. His weirdest record. Number 11. Sleeps with Angels. Bad Vibes Abound. Number 10. Reactor. Opera Star. Number 9. Everybody Knows This Is Nowhere. Original Ragged Glory. Number 8. Comes a Time. Peace at Last. Number 7. Harvest. Spotty, but transcendent. Number 6. Time Fades Away. Ears Spontaneously Combusted. Number 5. Psychedelic Pill. Long Live Horse. Number 4. After the Gold Rush. Smells Like Hits. Number three, Rust Never Sleeps, The Horse Transcendent. Number two, On the Beach, Charles Manson Approves. Number one, Zuma, Untangling the 70s. Well, there we have it. I do hope that you found today's presentation to be interesting, that it piqued your curiosity, and that despite my misgivings in the beginning, it somehow challenged your point of view on the work of Neil Young. Obviously, anybody who makes a list in any order puts themselves up for argument or correction, and I'm all too happy to hear about those in the comments. What are your favourite Neil Young albums? What are your favourite Neil Young songs? Where do you think Young sits in the pantheon of great singer-songwriters who emerged from the 1960s. I would cherish your thoughts as they may perhaps rekindle in me the long-dead passion for the man's music. But until the next time we meet together in good fellowship, or until the nasty YouTube police shut the channel down, you keep listening to the good stuff and you stay righteous. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> <laughs>